first talk, I will talk a little bit about myself. Uh, I am the CEO of Angels Nest, Angels Den Mexico. We are an investor network uh, that are trying hard to go from Mexico to Latin America, to Canada, and to Europe. Okay, uh, my CEO Israel is right now in Germany, trying to do this. Okay, we have been in Chile, we have been in Canada, and we have more than 180 angel investors in Mexico. We have funded in the last year six projects so far, in the first year of operations. Uh, okay, so I will start talking about uh, startup valuation and then about the scaling projects in Latin America. Okay, first I will give a brief introduction to Latin to valuation. I will try to make a presentation in less than 15 minutes in order to give 10 minutes to Q&A. Okay. okay, why did you value a startup? The only, the only thing that evaluation is needed for is to take an investment decision. If you're an entrepreneur, you are not doing evaluation as, an, as a KPI, that every month I will do the evaluation of my startup to see how I'm doing. No, you will not do that. You will do evaluation as an entrepreneur when you need capital, when you need uh, to seek capital and to uh, fundraising. And if you are an investor and you want to invest in a startup, you will need to see evaluation. Okay? And I need and I say see because it's not and I, I didn't say make. Okay? So there are two phrases that even though they are true, they are not so helpful. The first one is okay, valuation is not a is not a science. It's an art. Yeah, and so what? Okay, yes, it is an art or not. Yes, of course it's an art. But waiting a, a, a growing business is not an art. That is a science. Okay, and there are uh, financial methods to do it. There are no financial methods to value startups. And the most common mistakes that an investor and entrepreneurs do in an ecosystem that is growing like Mexican ecosystem, is trying to apply those methods in a startup. And they start to say, OK, I will do discounted cash flow or multiples or whatever financial method you know and you can think of. It's not worthy to do it in a startup. It is a waste of time. Okay? And the second phrase that even though it's true, it doesn't apport anything, it's that a value is worth what the market is willing to pay for it. Yes, of course. If you are an entrepreneur and you say, okay, my startup is valued at $25 million so far, and I am selling 100,000 pesos per year, you have a problem because no investor will say, yes, you are right and I will pay for it. Okay? Okay. Okay, but do we need to make evaluation? Yes, of course we have to do evaluation. It does matter, but why does it matter? Okay, if you put yourself as an entrepreneur on the investor side, you will say, okay, my valuation, I, I don't care how I do get to that value or to, or to that amount, it will be in two scenarios. Even if it is too low or it's too high. If it's too low, there is a big, big chance that the entrepreneur will say, no, thank you, investor. I will not take your $100,000 for the 65% of my company. I will simply won't do it. I will look or elsewhere for the $100,000. So it's, it's a risk that you as an investor value the company very low because you will find yourself in a position of getting no deals. And if the valuation is too high, you will have a risk that you are buying a small part of a company at a very high price. 
And what will happen? You as an investor does not want to invest in one company. You want to make a portfolio. So if you get a lot of money into one company, it will hinder your opportunity to put more money in another company. So, okay. So getting in the middle, I get the right price, and that's the art. How will get there? Okay. This can, I will talk a little bit about the, uh, these two methods, financial methods to uh, value companies. I said companies, not startups, okay? Okay, uh, discounted cash flow is quantitative, analytical, sophisticated, and irrelevant. Why is it irrelevant? Because it is based in what if I get to these sales, okay? And it, in order to get a decent valuation in a startup, you will have to go for three, four, five, even seven years of valuation or um, pronostics of your sales, even though you are not selling anything yet, or you are selling a very little amount of money or very little, you are really small, and you will say, I will get where Uber is right now. Okay? I will get to sell $100 million in five years or in seven years. And there is no way an investor will say, yes, you will get there. It will simply don't ha will, won't happen. And multiples. OK. Multiples is a reduction or a simplification on discounted capsule. I don't know if you knew that. But how does the industry multiple is, is how do you get to an industry multiple? Okay, you can go to some databases and get the number. Okay. But how those companies got the, got the number? They, they took the biggest companies in the industry that are on the stock market, do some calculation based on their pronostics, and then took the, cap, the, the size of the company and converted to a multiple. And they say, okay, Johnson & Johnson, Netflix, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, took these kinds of company and get to a multiple. So applying that multiple in a startup will be idiotic. No investor will do that because that is not the multiple of a startups. That's the multiple of the stock market companies. Okay? Things that are relevant when you get to valuation in a startup. And it's those, two, those things, those 10 things. One is the people. First one is the people. The founders, the key employees, the counselors, the business partners that you already have, those are key, it's a key component of your valuation. Does produce money? Does produce sales? Not necessarily. Not yet. If those people are not the right people to have in your team, you won't produce sales and you won't produce money. Okay? Second is intellectual property. Do you have your patents, your, um, your trademark? You have, is it protected? Can it be protected? Do you want to protect it in a formal way? These are the, the questions that an investor will do okay, to an entrepreneur. And it are, it's very, and check it out, it's in the second place. If, you, if your innovation cannot be protected, it's very hard to think that you will be able to scale your, your project. Third point, actual clients, contracts, letters of intent, so, uh, social uh, partners, etc. Right? What about the market? Are you try, are you near to get into the market? Have you already been there? Uh, the fourth is the uh, oh, in English the revenue model or 
the how will you make money? Okay, I will sell this product. Okay, I will sell it online. I will sell it via business partners. I have. I will be. I. I. I will be able to export or not. I want to export or not. Beside the project, beside the the product, I will be giving some consultancy. So, what are your revenue model? Where are you make? How are you making money? Market strategy. Will you go global? You will go national. You will attack a niche. You will go for all the market. How are you going to do that? Size of the market, your potential market, and this is very peculiar. In Mexico, we have um, an ag a government agency that is called INEGI that makes a lot of statistics. And a lot of entrepreneurs start saying, OK, there are 120 million people in Mexico, which 53% are women. And from those 53%, I will get to this 55% that are in the social class uh, A, B, and C. And from those, I will get and get and get and get. And they start doing this analysis from top to down. From the 120 million people in Mexico to the 20 million people that they will try to sell their product. Okay? And I say, okay, that's good. Now, those 20 million women, where are they living? Ah, all around Mexico. Where? All around Mexico. And how will you get in six months or in a year to all of Mexico? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so that is not your potential market right now. It might be in two, three, four, or five years, but right now that is not your potential market. The other way to do the market size is from bottom up. What are the product I am selling it to? Right now, my customers are the friends of my wife. Okay, that's good. And what kind of client is that okay you can say okay they are they are they are in this uh, social stratus they have these incomes they have these preferences they they have these wishes so so they buy my product okay and then how many people like the friends of your wife exist around you or near to you where you can reach them and then that is your potential market right now. It's good to see the 20 million or 25 million that you can get in some time. But it's even better to know the 50,000 that you can get with a specific marketing campaign or uh, with certain efforts that you can do right now. Okay? The next point is how, how much money have we invested yet in, in so far? the founders and the friends and family, and how much money do, you, do we want? Is the business has any debts that they have to pay? Usually, a uh, first investor does not want to pay debt. Okay? Usually, there are some uh, investors that can make some debt payments, but not so far. The next thing to know is your competitors and your bar entry barriers. Who are your competitors? Your direct competitors. Okay, I, I am selling uh, honey in powder. Okay. Who else is selling honey in powder? No one. Okay. What is the use of your product? Ah, we will use the product to sweet the coffee. Okay. Which are your competitors in the sweetening coffee industry? Okay, we have sugar, we have Splenda, we have Stevia, etc. Okay, you have to know them. You have to know their capabilities, and you have to know if they can copy your innovation quickly and set you aside. And finally, what is the time and cost of your development times or your migration times? Okay, we have a platform. We are developing developing a platform. And when, when we finish, we will migrate every customer that we have already into the new platform. Okay. What about those times? Okay. Okay. In this table, you can say uh, we have uh, on the left side we have the entrepreneur, the team, the product, the market, the financial model, and 
punto de equilibrio. Uh, when you get, when your sales are equal to your costs. Okay? And we see per country, France, UK, and Spain, what are the investors putting attention in? That we can see that the financial model is important in Spain. It's almost 10%. But if you can see the entrepreneur is really important in, 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 in those three countries. I'm sorry I don't have data for Canada or Mexico, but we can see that, okay? Uh, okay, valuation. I will start going a little bit faster. Do you know what pre-money pre and post-money means? I can skip this, or do you want me to explain it? Okay, pre-money is the, com the value of the company right now without any more investments. And post-money valuation is the valuation that is, uh, that is made with the money that you are looking for if you are an entrepreneur. Or if you are an investor, it's the valuation after you put the, your $100,000 in the company. Okay? How do we calculate the, uh, both of them? First, post-money is the investment money multiplied by the total number of uh, uh, stock, the, the stock actions, divided by the number of stocks that were emitted or were created in this round of money. Okay? And the prime money is that post money less the investment money that you, uh, you, got, you got. Example, if you have a 100 actions right now and you're looking for $100,000, and you will emit 25 actions, the post-money valuation will be that, 500,000, okay? That is on, on the formula. And the pre-money will be the 500, subtracting the 100,000, okay? Okay, what about the strategies? How can, I, uh, how can I get to the value of that company? Okay, here is no a right answer. You can do it any way you want, okay? You can use more than one method. Why will you use more than one method? Try to converge and try to see if multiple methods of evaluation got to the same number. If that happens, then you're, you, you can see that you can say, okay, I, I think I'm doing it right. If one valuation goes to $1 million and another one to $100,000, you will have a problem. Which one I choose? Okay. Investors are looking for high returns. They are not looking for 10% of return. They are not. Okay. They will not invest in a startup looking for that percentage. They are looking for high returns. But they are looking returns on their portfolio, not only on your startup. So they can sacrifice some return or some expectancy of return in one company based on their portfolio. And we have to be aware not to disincentivize the entrepreneur. As an investor, you have to be you are you have to be willingly trying to get a deal. And between words, how mu how much did you like that project? If the idea and the entrepreneur are spectacular, but the numbers does not seem right, you might also invest in the company. Okay? If you don't like the, the project, or you simply don't get along with the entrepreneur, you will not get any deal in there, okay? Okay, formal methods of valuation. I already discussed this, I will uh, pass it. Okay, methodologies of valuation. The first one, and very commonly used, the informal method, which means this is not a method. It's what I think that the company value, and it's what the other side thinks the company value. We try to negotiate, and as I say in red, it's very difficult to negotiate because it's based on error, on nothing. So it's very, very commonly that the entrepreneurs and the investors try to get this method into line. Grid ratio. 
this is you have the formula in there the, the investment that you're looking for multiplied by the percentage of the founders divided by the investment that the founders have already made so far multiplied by the percentage of the investor this is only to see a parameter okay this is not a valuation method this is okay the valuation and the, the, the amount of money that you are asking me and the percentage you are offering does it make sense or not and it says if a range is acceptable range between 5 and 8 if it goes beyond 10 that's a greedy entrepreneur okay and if you are entrepreneurs before going to investment apply this and see okay the investors might think that I am greedy or not okay the Berkus method Okay, in this, this method is the amounts that are in here is in, in, in United States dollars. It's a lot of people are using this method in the United States. I do not recommend it to use it in Mexico, okay, because the ecosystem is completely different. But in, in United States, what it says is the investor should think that the company will get to $20 million sales in five years. Okay? That is a big if. Eh? I, as an investor, think after talking to the entrepreneur that this company might get to that point in five years of selling $5 million, $20 million per year. If I don't think that, I don't use this method. Okay? If I think that, then there are five components. They are in English. I, I, I will say it's an idea, prototype, quality management team, strategic relationships, and product rollout. One of, each one of these five might get a valuation up to $500,000. I said up to. Okay? It's not 500. It might be as high as $500,000. As $500, so in this method, all startups have a top of valuation of $2.5 million. In Mexico, that will not happen. None startup will value that much in Mexico. Okay? At least not now. The carry method is the rules of thirds. One third for the founders, one third for the management team, and one third for the founders. Uh, it is very simple to do it but it's inflexible and it gives a question what about the next round or the multiple rounds that will came after this one it will be very hard to negotiate okay the venture capital method in here the investor will calculate his exit okay he will say okay I will put one hundred thousand dollars in this company and in three years or four years, I will want to get $700,000 as an exit. And from that point, if he says, okay, four years or five years or three years, starts making a calculation backwards okay, to see if the company will be able to get to those milestones in that time. Okay. Usually, this is used when the company has not sold anything yet. If there is zero history of sales, you can use this method and talk to the entrepreneur to see if he's able to do it. And if you think that he will be able to do it, then you can invest. Okay, okay. before going to scaling, what I want to say is valuation is about getting the things done. What investors like is invest the money. They don't, like, they, don't, they don't want to be in coffees and breakfasts and meetings after meeting after meeting. They do not want that. They don't want to waste their time. They want to invest their money. And the entrepreneurs, what need is their money. So if you're an entrepreneur, I hope this is helpful to you to see 
and to get to the point of valuation. There is not a formal method that will do it. It is not a, it's, it's not a, a science. And okay, let's jump into scaling. Okay, there are some data of some of the countries. Uh, yesterday, Hernan gave us more data. I will not get a lot more into this. We have 124 million people in Mexico, 31 million in Peru, uh, almost 50 million in Colombia, 20 million in Chile, and the PIB per capita in US dollars per year. Okay? We can see that Argentina and Chile have the, the biggest PIB per capita uh, so far. Okay? Myths and realities. The Latin American countries are similar. Wow, that is really a myth. I can tell you that the thinking of the way of thinking between a Mexican and a Peruvian guy is completely different. Okay? The way to get to an investor in Peru, it will be very different to get to an investor in Mexico or to a client. There is no one better than the other. It's simply different. The myth is thinking that as we are Latin Americans, we are the same. And that we can be put as a stamp and say, okay, let's go to Latin America. Wow. Okay. Where? Even, even so, in Mexico, it's different to go to Oaxaca, to Monterrey. It's very different. The, the market strategy is different for penetrating those markets inside Mexico. Inside Latin America, that you can multiply that by 10. Okay? As we speak Spanish, it will be easy to put operations in another country. No, it will not be. They were talking in the panel that maybe putting a local cost, a local partner in the country will, might be a good strategy. Of course it will be. Because that person will have the culture and, will, and the know-how to penetrate that market. The technology scales naturally without borders. That's a myth. Okay? Realities. You will have less investment in development and to adequate the product. At least you won't have to translate the product to another language. You will have to do some adequacies, but you will not have to do a, a full uh, translation program. We have all, all Latin America is between five, uh, you, uh, I don't know how to say in English, usos horarios. Okay, we are between, in five hours difference from Mexico to Brazil, okay? we have a big potential market. We are a lot of Latin Americans. Yes, we are. And Mexico is a great country for using apps. A lot of the unicorns are unicorns because they are selling in Mexico. And not only in Mexico, in Latin America, but specifically Mexico is the number five country of Facebook users the seventh country on Twitter and the ninth, ninth country in LinkedIn globally. That Facebook number is quite impressive. Okay. How to scale? Okay, I see two basic strategies with our own team or using a partner. If we use our own team, it is very possible that you will have to send one of the founders to the other country to live there, not to travel there once a month. No, to be there in the market. And you will try to replicate the sales model that you have in your own country. And this might be, this might be, you might be found, you might found this difficult to do. Because in your country, you have all your network. And in the new country, if you go by yourself, you will have zero network at the beginning. So you have to take that into consideration. And you cannot say, I will not spend more money in this. 
when you take that decision and you go, one of the funders go to Chile to open Chile, it's all the way down. Okay? You have to do it. If you, that, if you did that movement, there is no backtrack. If you go back, you lose that market completely. It will be very difficult to go in again. And I already said that the networking starts at zero. And if you go with a social partner, uh, maybe you will not have to move one of the founders to the other country. Maybe you will be able to do it uh, in this, uh, by distance. And you will have to take the partner to replicate the model. And you, have to, you will have to, the, the, the key in here is to select that partner. Okay? It might be an employee or it might be a, a commercial partner or something. Okay? You, will get, you will spend a lot, more, a lot less in travel expenses or relocation expenses. And you will have the networking possibly in optimal levels because the partner already has them. Okay. The cost of acquisition and retention of the customer will vary market to market and will vary also about the strategy that we already talked about. Okay. Um, but these costs might and should be analyzed before going to the other country. 